a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a relatively recent confirmation for the existence of what seems to be an extremely Earth-like planet, at least in terms of size and mass, but a planet that, as you can see from this image, is very likely very volcanically active. So active, as a matter of fact, that the scientists behind this paper even compare this to the volcanic moon Io orbiting around Jupiter, one of the most volcanically active objects in the entire solar system. And so let's discuss this discovery in a little bit more detail, talk a little bit more about the star system where all of this was found, and the implications from this discovery for the future of astronomy. And let's start around TRAPPIST-1. You might still remember that a few years ago, NASA scientists discovered the most exciting terrestrial planet star system approximately 40 light years away from us. This one contains seven planets, very similar to planet Earth in mass and in size. But orbiting a red dwarf star, or an M-type star, representing a very different type of a star system. And here the scientists were actually kind of excited to discover anything about these planets. For example, do they contain atmospheres? Do they contain ices and volatiles on the planet? Is there any volcanism around them? And what exactly are they made out of as well? Now, despite years of research, the preliminary investigation suggests that, for the most part, maybe they don't contain atmosphere or even water on the surface. But we're not going to know this for at least a few more years. But the scientists still wanted to find a star system where we can maybe almost definitively say that there is atmosphere or some sort of volatile activity somewhere on the surface. Mostly because we obviously want to compare this to planet Earth and essentially find out what these other exoplanets are like. Specifically, terrestrial exoplanets. Ones very similar in size and in mass to planet Earth. And a few years ago, back in 2019, the scientists discovered another planetary system with the name you see right there that originally contained two different planets. This one was slightly farther away at 86 light years away from us, but was once again an M-type star, or what we usually refer to as a red dwarf. And initially the scientists found two planets. Planet B, that was about 20% bigger than planet Earth, with a single orbit here taking less than one day, and planet C, that was about two and a half times size of planet Earth, with an orbit of five days. And though it was an exciting discovery initially, this was a somewhat typical system discovered by various other telescopes, such as TESS, and there was nothing unusual here at first. But then, more recently, the scientists discovered another planet, Planet D, a potentially rocky planet, just a little bit larger than Earth, something like 3% larger in terms of size. And this Planet D was actually extremely Earth-like in mass as well. And this planet was the smallest of the three, and orbited right between planet B and planet C. And because this planet was also very likely tidally locked, the initial calculations for the daytime temperatures here were relatively high, maybe 300 to 400 Kelvin. So maybe not as high as Venus, but higher than planet Earth. And at first the implication here was that maybe this was a planet that kind of looked like this. A nightball planet with a really hot surface facing the star, but possible temperate conditions and maybe even liquid water in the twilight area and also on a dark side. And because this particular star was also relatively cool in terms of temperature and also not as active, and the planet itself was very Earth-like in mass and size, it of course presented a somewhat intriguing discovery. But further investigations from one of the recent studies determined something else that was even more exciting. Or I guess exciting for the scientists behind this paper. It actually implied that there's a major interaction between this planet and the much larger mini-Neptune that's orbiting very close to it, the planet known as C. The planet that's about two and a half size of planet Earth, but also is about seven times as massive. And so the extreme gravitational interactions between these planets very likely changed the surface of this planet to something that might resemble with this. It might be a very active volcanic planet for pretty much exactly the same reasons why Io is volcanic as well. Because of the way that these two planets orbit, the smaller planet, the one that's similar to planet Earth, is unable to circularize its orbit and thus receives very powerful tidal interactions from its neighboring planets, which essentially ends up dramatically heating up the internal structure of the planet with all of this energy released as powerful volcanoes. And if so, all of this volcanism very likely releases huge amounts of volatiles and potentially, because of the mass of this planet, even allows it to have a relatively thick atmosphere. Atmosphere that would be enough to maybe even support somewhat habitable conditions in certain parts of this planet. In other words, because of this volcanic activity, there is now a really high chance that the twilight or the dark side of the planet 
may indeed have all these volatiles condense into liquid water and create various oceans. And though one side of the planet would be volcanic and very active, potentially super hot, the other side of the planet would also be volcanic, but potentially a lot more habitable. In the process circulating all kinds of materials, including carbons, across the planet, and possibly creating a chemical cycle that might not exist otherwise. And because of various discoveries from Venus, including the more recent discoveries of potentially still active volcanoes, we know that volcanoes play a huge role in the overall evolution of atmospheres and of course climate on all sorts of different planets. Technically, the reason Venus is the way it is, is because of ancient volcanic eruptions. And so it's quite possible that this planet has a lot of geological activity, maybe even without the need for plate tectonics like on planet Earth. And so it might actually have very active cycles, necessary for simple life to survive. Especially if the eruptions here involve carbon dioxide, various types of sulfuric chemicals, and of course water vapor. Stuff that we expect from volcanoes on planet Earth. Either way though, the discovery from this unusual planet can definitely help us understand exactly what happens to planets over time and what role volcanoes play in the development of habitable conditions on various planets. But there is of course a main shortcoming for this particular study and this discovery. None of this was physically observed. At the moment all of this was just implied based on the observations of specific orbits of these planets and based on the modeling involving gravitational interaction. Since the scientists discovered that the planets here approach each other extremely closely, nearly 1.5 million kilometers away, which is about 30 times closer than the distance of Earth to Mars, it of course suggested that the tidal interactions must result in something really powerful. And we know from our own solar system that these types of deformations and tidal interactions almost always result in volcanism. But depending on what exactly these volcanoes release, the planet could be entirely different. For example, if it releases sulfur, this planet could actually be relatively cool. As a matter of fact, sulfur in the atmosphere of Venus makes it much cooler than it would be otherwise. And so the composition of the atmosphere is quite important. Nevertheless, this is still one of the more exciting discoveries of terrestrial planets in the last few years. It's not your typical Earth-like planet, and it's definitely not a planet we expect to have complex life form anytime soon, but it's potentially a very exciting planet that we can actually use to discover something absolutely incredible, which is exactly why it was already given observational time on the James Webb Space Telescope. And so sometimes in the next few months, we'll hopefully be able to discover something else coming from this planet, as it's observed in infrared frequencies, and as we learn a little bit more about its surface and potentially the activity and potentially its atmosphere, which is of course the important part. And so fingers crossed, we might discover something absolutely incredible on LP 791-18D. But we're not going to know exactly what it is for the next few months. Until these future discoveries or until the scientists learn something else about this planet, for now it's somewhat hypothetical but definitely super exciting. The first ever volcanic terrestrial planet very similar to planet Earth. And in theory a planet potentially possessing very thick atmosphere and maybe even a lot of chemical cycles that we know led to life on planet Earth. With its current surface even to some extent resembling early planet Earth as well. Earth that we believe existed four and a half billion years ago. And so once we learn something else about what's happening here and what this planet might even look like, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics and other exciting planets discovered in the last few years in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.